Welcome back. I've been focused on this BC election, not just because I'm a Westerner, because I'm increasingly of the view that this election is incredibly important to the economy of the rest of the country. Well, joining me now from Vancouver is a former political boss for British Columbia, Cabinet Minister Stockwell Day, who was a Cabinet Minister until 2011, is now in the private sector. Hey, Stock, welcome back to the show. Good to be with you, Ezra. Now, you know BC extremely well. You were the minister responsible for that province under Stephen Harper, and you're still deeply involved in politics. You chose to back Christy Clark's Liberal government instead of the BC Conservative Party run by your former colleague, John Cummins. Why did you make that decision? A couple of reasons, Ezra. Um, I've actually been a supporter of the BC Liberal Party for a number of years. Um, I was finance minister, as you may recall, in Alberta in the 90s when the NDP were in power in BC. And we saw firsthand from that vantage point uh, capital flight, human resource flight, uh, people who were innovative, job creating, hardworking people simply leaving the province because the economy was in such terrible shape. And uh, those of us living in BC just don't want to see that happen again. The uh, BC Liberals uh, turned things around, they're really a coalition party much along the lines of what we tried to accomplish back in 2000 federally. They pulled that together in 2001. The coalition has basically held. There is some disfavor and discontent because of things that happened uh, with the former uh, premier. And uh, the BC Liberals are wearing that now. And uh, the NDP are ahead in the polls, as you know. But I'm, I'm supporting the BC Liberals. It's the only chance to uh, keep the NDP policies from, uh, frankly, um, damping down, ruining the economy really is what will happen if they get back in. I can't really disagree with you. Yesterday we interviewed a candidate for the B.C. Conservatives. Seemed like a nice guy, but just didn't have the horses. I mean, uh, the campaign uh, for the B.C. Conservatives seems like it doesn't have the money, the organization, the manpower. I, I think the choice is, uh, you know, Christy Clark, a tax raiser. Uh, you know, it, it's not a pretty choice, but I agree with you. It's, it's much better than the, the NDP. Let me ask you about Adrian Dix's comments about the Kinder Morgan pipeline. It doesn't surprise me that he opposed the Northern Gateway pipeline that would go right. through green fields, have to deal with a, a dozen, dozens of Indian bands, you know, a new path. It doesn't su surprise me that the NDP would oppose that. But for Adrian Dix to oppose the expansion of an existing pipeline that has worked without incident for 50, 60 years, that has not a, dropped a drop of oil, in, in, the, uh, in the water at its tanker terminal in the 50 years. That's stunning to me. What do you make of Adrian Dix's comments against that pre-existing Trans Mountain Pipeline by Kinder Morgan? Well, we predicted he would start to be uh, flipping and flopping all over the place on policy as soon as he got under the glare of media lights which an election campaign brings. He's largely been hidden from that spotlight, hasn't had to come out with any positions on much at all, and you know how it works. Uh, the governing party will take hits for as long as they're a government. And uh, the one in opposition often is able to kind of sneak in under the radar. But now that he's being exposed on some of these things, under pressure, he is changing his positions in, in some pretty radical ways. As, and this one is big. Uh, because before he had indicated, you know, don't worry. He would said to the, uh, Dix had said to the business community, uh, don't worry, trust me, there's going to be no major changes. This is a very significant change. Um, to deflect from that, he, he quite smartly or craftily uh, with his advisors a couple days ago, uh, they immediately tried to change the channel and talked about selling off some major assets uh, downtown Vancouver, which in and of themselves, that might be uh, you know, something to look at. But uh, he, he's had a bad first week now with the media lights on full glare. And uh, obviously, those of us who don't want to see NDP economic policies in place we're happy that uh, his many inconsistencies are starting to be exposed. Yeah. You know, I, you're right, it is a flip-flop, but I mean, a flip-flop, you can flip-flop on 100 issues, and it's no big whoop. But to say we're actually going to stop a pre-existing pipeline and a port that's under federal jurisdiction, not for any environmental reason, not for any scientific reason, just we're going to stop it. To me, that would be like him saying, you know what, I don't like this CP rail anymore. It's too smoky. We're going to review the CP rail. I mean, that's not just a BC issue. This is something for the rest of Canada. Now, Stock, you had, I mean, two hats on. You were the minister in charge of British Columbia, but you were also a federal minister under Harper. Tell me right. what this means for the rest of Canada. You're fighting the fight there in BC. But God forbid if Adrian Dix becomes a premier, and I'm afraid he will, what would shutting down these new infrastructure projects to, to 
the Pacific Rim mean? I mean, you can't even call yourself a gateway to the Pacific anymore if you're shutting the, the pulling up the drawbridge on the gate. The implications are huge. Um, it'll it'll more than just resonate back into Alberta, Saskatchewan, other resource-related provinces. The one reason you might not see the huge amount of human resource flight from BC into Alberta is this will actually affect this type of policy approach will affect investment and some of the ongoing work in Alberta and in Saskatchewan. And uh, keeping in mind that what's going on in Alberta, what's going on in Saskatchewan and in BC, in terms of resource development, value added, along with value added technical and human resource services, going to the huge demand countries in Asia, uh, the technology has increased so much that we really are talking about economic development that truly is sustainable. And uh, the advances that have been made in terms of uh, reductions of emissions and uh, sensitivity to the environment are huge. Dix is ignoring all that. He's simply uh, taking this uh, knee-jerk reaction. Uh, when you have countries like China, India, Vietnam, Indonesia, that are having major progress in terms of economic growth, people by the tens of millions moving from abject poverty into lower middle income and middle income status. They do need these value added resources with the environmental protections that uh, BC and other provinces, Alberta also, can build into them. If these countries don't get the resource, not just the resources and the value added, uh, and the personnel that we can offer, they will go to other jurisdictions mm -hmm. that don't have the same human rights records as Canada does, that, that do not have the same environmental records. These countries have to grow, they will continue to grow, but it will be at the expense of the environment and possibly some human rights issues if they don't receive and are not able to receive in a timely fashion sustainable uh, developed products from BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan. This will have implications right across the country. Stockwell Day, thanks for joining us today. Great to see you again.